Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Ishani Borde. Um, this is my partner, Oscar Hernandez. And um, today we're going to be presenting our research proposal for the impacts of water temperature on the rate of decomposition in rain fungi in mangrove estuaries in Biscayne Bay, Florida. So rising temperatures around the world have forced alterations in the behavior of thousands of species as they're forced to adapt to rapidly changing ecosystems and increasingly erratic climate. Rain organisms are especially vulnerable to such temperature changes as they're specifically acclimated to climates that are more, like they're generally more stable than what is seen in terrestrial habitats. As ocean temperatures rise, marine organisms will find their internal chemistry affected, which will have an impact on their metabolic processes and therefore their interaction with the ecosystem at large. Therefore, we can postulate that global warming will not only affect ecosystems through changes in abiotic habitat factors, such as rainfall and natural disasters, but also through changes in the food web, as organisms require increasing or decreasing amounts of energy to sustain themselves. Microorganisms, including decomposers, may especially be affected by this, as they lack more complex structures to maintain homeostasis. This could have severe effects on other organisms because microbes produce and recycle nutrients and organic molecules for other organisms to use. In particular, microbial fungi are an essential part of marine ecosystems, as they're able to break down cellulose and lignocellulose, which generally go undigested by most other organisms. This makes them prolific in marine habitats such as mangrove forests, where woody, where woody plants dominate and produce an abundance of cellulosic biomass. However, marine fungi and their susceptibility to climate change have been relatively understudied compared to other microorganisms. Therefore, we would like to propose a research project investigating how the feeding preferences of fungal microorganisms in Floridian mangrove ecosystems are affected by temperature. This investigation would have two parts, one observing the feeding rate of Lowerthia fungi on Isophora mango at different temperatures, and a second part observing Lowerthia's preferred species of mangrove at different temperatures. Next slide, please. Thank you. It's generally understood that as temperature increases, an organism's rate of metabolism will increase up until the point that the temperature is high enough to cause harm to the organism. Studies on fish and periphytic microorganisms have shown that their metabolism and food intake increase with moderate temperature increases. Though once the temperature reaches past the organism's optimal temperature range, metabolism quickly decreases. However, in a study by Mitterwalner et al, the effect of temperature on the abalone Haliotis squamata's feeding preferences were tested um, to find that temp as temperatures increased, the rate of abalone feeding actually decreased. This is most likely because as a tropical species, abalones are sensitive to elevated temperatures. However, this result contradicts the previously mentioned understanding that metabolism increases tem with temperature. Therefore, it poses an interesting question for fungal microorganisms in tropical environments. Would their metabolism and food intake increase, as we would expect with most microorganisms, or would their metabolism decrease with increasing temperatures, like H. squamata? Mitterwalner et al. also experimented with diet preferences, and the study found that abalones actually preferred different species of macroalgae, macroalgae at different temperatures. We saw it fit to perform a similar experiment with Lowerthia, because if their feeding preferences shift with rising temperatures, then it could have an effect on mangroves and the organisms that reside in or, or around them. The fungal genus that we're targeting in this experiment is Lowerthia, which makes up about 20% of marine mangrovial fungi in past collections of Floridian mangrove fungi. Species of Lowerthia have been found on nearly every species of mangrove in Biscayne Bay, Florida, and are therefore ideal candidates for the study. Next slide, please. Our hypothesis is that the decomposition rate of Lowerthia fungi will increase with increasing temperatures, and that Lowerthia fungi will increase their preferences for different species of mangrove as temperature increases. So for the first part of our experiment, we will be collecting visibly healthy nematophores in the summertime from Rhizophora mangle in Biscayne Bay, Florida at Biscayne National Park and then observing the rate of decomposition of organic material by the low worthy species in various water temperatures in the laboratory. With the samples of pneumatophores collected, we will culture our desired genus by using modern culturing techniques, promoting growth in Erlenmeyer flocks with pieces of pneumatophore bark mixed with water from the environment site the specimens were collected from. We will then plate the resulting concoction onto 10 different agar plates and allow them to sit and grow for a period of one week using an antimicrobial cocktail to prevent the growth of bacteria in the plates. And once our plates have, 
have had time to grow visible colonies of fungi, we will then perform a polymerase chain reaction and analysis to verify our organism and subsequently isolate our desired species onto new plates using the same antimicrobial solution to ensure sample purity. After we have allowed our desired species to grow in agar plates for another two weeks, we will transfer them onto medium sized 35 gram cubes of rhizophora mangle and into tanks that mimic the natural environment of rhizophora mangle in Biscayne Bay, where we will observe the rate of decomposition for a period of 30 days, taking great care to ensure that the tanks' temperatures remain constant throughout. We will observe the rate of decomposition by manipulating the water temperature in the tanks the worthy it will be in, and observe the rate of decomposition by recording the mass of our blocks of rhizophora mangle at the beginning and end of our experiments, using sensitive mass scales for accuracy. Our first tank will act as our control, with the temperature favorable for healthy mangroves and tropical environments, approximately 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and the second will be at a temperature of the average conditions in Biscayne Bay over the past year, which is approximately 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Subsequent tanks will be kept at constant temperatures as well, each increasing by 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit respectively from the Biscayne Bay temperature. After the completion of our experiment, we, accept, we expect to see the rate of decomposition increase with the increasing temperature in the tanks. Each of the blocks to be used in the experiment will start off at 35 grams. And as we can see here in the model graph, the rate of decomposition for the control and Biscayne tanks are expected to show gradual declines, while subsequent tanks show increasingly higher rates of decomposition as subsequent tanks increase in temperature. We expect that tanks three and four, set to 86.5 and 87 degrees Fahrenheit respectively, will show the most significant rate of decomposition, as current literature from Kohlmeyer on certain species of marine fungi have shown to have higher rates of decomposition with increasing water temperature. In the second part of our experiment, we will test whether fungi have different preferences in mangrove species based on what temperature they're exposed to. Um, we will use the same um, temperature for each tank as we did in the first part. Can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. To begin the second stage, we will obtain fungal cultures exactly as performed in the first part. We will then prepare six small tanks with roughly the similar conditions to the fungi's natural habitat, primarily by maintaining a salinity similar to water found at the collection sites, and maintain each tank with the temperatures used in the previous part of the experiment. So that's 80 degrees, 85 degrees, 85.5, 86, 86.5, and 87 degrees Fahrenheit. Within each tank, we will measure and then place three cubes of mangrove root, each from different species of mangrove, which will be rhizophora mangrove, the red mangrove, Avicennia germinans, the black mangrove, and Lagunculeria racemosa, the white mangrove. These are the three most common species of mangrove in South Florida, and the Lowerthia Lowerth genus has been found in the marine environment of both red and black mangroves. We will stir in an equal amount of cultured Lowerthia in each tank. After 30 days of observation, which allows the fungi to significantly decompose the wood, we will measure the mass of each cube again, which will allow us to know which wood was preferred by the worth yeah, at each temperature. Can I have the next slide? Thank you. So this graph shows us a prediction of the results should we perform this experiment. As seen in the first part, the overall rate of decomp decomposition increases with temperature. The fungi still maintain a preference for our mangle, but the preference for the other species increase, meaning that the gap between our mangle and the other two species decreases. So for our timeline, we plan on commencing our experiment in the summertime in June 2022, when the trouble conditions of Florida are most ideal for mangrove estuaries in Biscayne Bay. Our team will consist of Vishani and I, as well as two other fellow postdocs, three graduate and three undergraduate students. We expect our research to officially conclude in the following year in the same month in the summertime of June 2023, which gives us plenty of time to repeat our experiment and compose the final paper. The expected cost of our research is $500,000 and includes all the necessary equipment detailed in the experimental procedure, as well as the costs included for um, anything else that was necessary for this study. Here in this pie chart, we will see all the necessary research 
materials and equipment needed for our study and the percentage that they take up. Each of the sections for the materials have been calculated according to the amount needed for our lab and includes the additional university overhead costs. Smaller sections that are not labeled are for other reagents and materials needed for experiments, such as dextrose, thermometers, etc., that are not as expensive as the other equipment needed. We have left out the percentage for pay of our lab group from this pie chart, but their salary has been calculated and included in the grant that we ask. With all that being said, we humbly ask the committee for your help in funding our research with a grant of $500,000. We firmly believe that our proposed research will produce invaluable results and will subsequently help advance or support current research within the scientific community on climate change. We would like to thank the committee again for taking the time to be here today and hear our proposal. Have a great day. And then here's just a list of our references.